Hello, this is Josh Carr. Um, I've got something really kind of special today. If you've ever built models from Excel and you've done it the hard way, you know how much time it can take. And there are a few companies out there that offer more automatic solutions, which basically do all the formulas for you. Uh, I've reviewed some in the past. Um, I got the opportunity to mess around with another one called Rockport Val. Uh, their web address you can see in the upper left-hand corner. It's rockportval.com. Uh, it's entirely cloud-based, which is really nice, because if you've ever tried to use any of the products out there, it, it's nice if you can work on it at any location, pull it up on your phone, you get the idea. Uh, in any event, they were kind enough to give me access to the software. Um, I'm going to mess around with it. I'm going to do a very simple file. Uh, build a cash flow, put in some expenses, and that's my goal. And I thought this might be interesting for some of you who are frankly sick of building this in Excel and are looking for possible options. Uh, in the interest of full disclosure, I will say that they gave me free access to the software, uh, so I'm not paying for it. Also, in interest of full disclosure, they were kind enough to give me a discount code. So if any of you want to sign up for an annual license, whereas normally it would be $2,500 a year, uh, if you use my code, you'll get 10% off. Uh, and that code is KAHR10. Uh, again, that's a 10% off code. Um, so yeah, so let's check, check it out, um, see if it's something you're interested in. And again, I'll remind you of that code at the end of the video uh, in case you find this to be useful. Um, cool. Or if you don't, that's fine too. Uh, it's not my software. I'm just trying to give an unbiased uh, opinion on it. Okay, so I'm going to log in here. Already loaded up my login and my password. And as you can see, this is a clean file. I've not made anything yet. So we can put in properties, we can put properties into portfolios. I've not messed around with the chart of accounts, but I assume that's there so you can put a uh, chart of account codes next to files. Uh, if you've ever tried to tie uh, a cash flow statement out to an accounting system, it's nice if you have account codes because you know one person might call taxes real estate taxes and the other person might call it RE taxes. And well, it's nicer if you have some consolidation. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, let's make a new file. I'll go to new properties and I will call it one, two, three, anywhere street, because again, that sounds good. And it looks like we can choose property types. Most people use these kind of products for office, retail, industrial. Frankly, for things like multifamily or lodging, you could probably just do it in Excel, but that's neat that they have options for that. Uh, I'm not going to bother with a real address. Uh, property size, I could put in, but one nice thing about the software is instead of you telling it the property size, it can just add up the square footages of the tenants. Uh, this way, you know, things link up, which actually makes a lot of sense. I mean, the rentable area of the property should be equal to adding up the tenants and the property. Uh, it's kind of obvious when you say it, but, you know, not everyone does it that way. Okay, so when I build models, I usually like to start from expenses, the logic being that tenants have expenses, and so put in the expenses first and then figure out what you can bill back. I'm going to add a few expenses. I'll do taxes, insurance, utilities, property management fee and taxes I'll make three hundred thousand dollars a year and insurance and utilities I'll make a per foot maybe 25 cents a foot and three bucks a foot and property management fee I'll make a percentage of EGR because generally that is a percent of what you collect you tend to pay managers based on uh, what they collect for you. Uh, it looks like you can detail all of these things. So instead of 300,000 a year, it looks like I could go in here and say, hey, it's not 300,000 a year, but it's, you know, I don't know, 75,000 a quarter or something. Let's 
see, can I take that and copy that across? It looks like I can. Well, that's nice. Okay, so I can spread it across. Of course, now it's doing uh, 25 a month, which is not what I wanted. Uh, maybe... Here, I'll do 25 a month. That's fine. Okay, so 25 a month still gets me where I need to go. Okay, I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, cool. Uh, utilities, I can make it variable. So I'll make it, say, 30% fixed. In other words, some percentage of the utilities are flat and are always paid. Some percentage will vary with uh, occupancy. It looks like you can also put in notional accounts. Uh, the idea being that you can have expenses that you don't calculate for what you pay, but you calculate it just so you can bill back things to tenants. Um, not going to play with that too much. That's more of an advanced concept, but whatever. I got some expenses in here. Let's put in some growth rates. I'm going to grow everything at 3%. Or sorry, grow everything at 3%. 3%. There we go. Uh, that would be income, expenses, everything. I'll put in a tenant. In this case, I'll call it an accounting firm. And I'll say it's 100,000 feet. Or let me put start date. Um, 4 1 4 22. There you go, 4122, and I'll have it go for five, for 60 months, the M for months. So we start, we end. I'll say it's 100,000 feet. I'll have the tenant pay 20 bucks a foot. I'll throw in a couple months of free rent, basically a period of time that you don't pay any rent if you sign a lease. Um, I could put in TIs and commissions. I'm going to be really simple about it for now. I'm just going to basically put in a tenant. And then for kicks, um, what else could I do? Uh, maybe I could put in <laughs> rollover assumptions. Uh, I'll just call it office. And I'll put in a probability. So this is like you're doing a weighted average. You're saying sometimes they stay, sometimes they go. 70%. Five years. A few months of downtime if they don't sign a lease. Rents might be, say, 25 and 22. New tenants, that is to say, would pay a different rent than renewal tenants. And, um, yeah, free rent, sure, two and zero. This is just me putting in pretty standard assumptions. Um, that's fine for now. And then... Because I didn't build it out, let's just say for kicks that the renewal method is net. And for the current tenant, it's net. Okay, so now I've built a pretty simple structure. I've got a 100,000 foot building. I've got some expenses. I put in a tenant, said they're paying 20 bucks a foot said it's a net lease, so they reimburse all the expenses, and I put in the world's dumbest rollover assumptions. And let me make sure that those rollover assumptions are connected to the tenant. Uh, rollover assumptions are connected to the tenant. There you go. And so if I did everything right, I should be able to build a cash flow. Let's check it out. I'll go to reports. I'll go to cash flow, and there she is. You basically now have a tenant who moves in in year one. Uh, there's some vacancy because they haven't, because they didn't move in until April. There's some, you can see that it ties to the accounting firm. There's some free rent. Uh, there's some rollover in year six. We get effective gross income. We should see utilities go up and then well, during rollover, probably goes down a little because there's some downtime or didn't really go down that much, but flatlined a little from year five to year six. We've got a property management fee and we get down to a net cash flow. Now, again, 
I didn't put in leasing costs. I didn't put in num multiple tenants, but that's kind of nice. It builds a simple cash flow statement. And if I press export up here, I'm betting you that it will launch Excel and I can see the output in Excel. <clears throat> Let's confirm that that's the case. And there it is. Of course, like anything in Excel, uh, it's just raw data. There's no you know, formulas here. Uh, the idea, of course, being that you do the formulas in the software, not you know, out here, uh, which I think generally makes sense. Um, and that is a very quick, you know, 10 minute let's mess around with Rockport Val. Um, you know, I don't know if I'm going to say this is the future of analysis because there's always going to be stuff you're going to do in Excel. I mean, things like equity waterfalls or complex debt structures. But for the grunt level of, hey, I need to build a cash flow statement, this is more than sufficient for spitting out a cash flow statement. Uh, of course, I haven't really put it through its paces. I haven't built in a bunch of tenants. I haven't played with multiple rollover assumptions. I mean, heaven knows there's a lot more to cash flow analysis than a single tenant with a net lease, but it basically does what it should do. Uh, and it's doing it in the cloud. And at least from my point of view, it's pretty zippy. Um, anyway, basic, simple video. Um, hopefully you found this useful. If you're interested in the software, again, you can check out their website out rockportval.com that's r-o-c-k-p-o-r-t-v-a-l.com and uh, there is a 10% code off their annual license that's valid and that code is k-a-h-r-10 again k-a-h-r-10 uh, hopefully you found this video to be interesting uh, if you want to read more about real estate finance, investment, or whatever, obviously I've got other videos. You can also check out my website at kahrrealestate.com, kahrrealestate.com. Uh, that's my website. You can check it out uh, if you have other questions or thoughts or whatever. Nonetheless, thanks again for joining me. And hopefully you found this helpful and uh, I'll probably make some more videos about this topic in the future. Best of luck. Keep building better models.